What do Lindsay Davenport, Placido Domingo, and Tyra Banks have in common? Well, they are all represented by the same man, the face and the brains behind the world's biggest sports marketing company that began as just another marketing idea. He's been called the original Jerry Maguire. Show me the money! Jerry, you better yell! Show me the money! creating and running the world's biggest sports marketing empire, boasting a list of clients that includes Tiger Woods, Tyra Banks, and the formidable Williams sisters. Mark Hume McCormick, known as the godfather of sports marketing, started out as a golfer. He was the top player at the College of William and Mary, competing against a little-known player from Wake Forest named Arnold Palmer. After college, McCormick traded in the links for the law books. He graduated from Yale and began practicing in 1954 at a law firm in Cleveland, Ohio. But golf was never far from his mind, and in 1960 he approached his former rival Arnold Palmer and offered to represent him, just as Palmer was emerging as one of golf's rising new stars. In time, he came to represent other talented newcomers, South Africa's Gary Player and then Jack Nicklaus. With a growing roster of top players, the foundation was set for McCormick's brainchild, the International Management Group, known simply as IMG. In 1968, the company took on the game of tennis. They signed Aussie player Rod Laver, and then added John McEnroe, Bjorn Borg, Jennifer Capriati, and Chris Everett to their roster currently representing 12 of the top 50 women and 21 of the top 50 men in tennis. The Cleveland-based sports and entertainment empire today represents a who's who's list of biggest stars in the sports world and beyond and runs the top sports academies for tennis and golf, the largest licensing agency as well as the top modeling agency. IMG also has a joint venture with Merrill Lynch to provide financial services to athletes and celebrities. McCormick's goal all along was to make the business of sports a marketable enterprise. And indeed, his idea was the start of today's multi-billion dollar sports marketing business. 41 years after signing its first client, IMG now controls one-third of the business. And that has made 71-year-old Mark Hume McCormick a very wealthy man. He's a member of Forbes' 400 richest Americans with $700 million and has been called the most powerful man in sports by Sports Illustrated magazine. In addition, he is the successful author of many books, including New York Times bestseller, What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. So, what's next for the man with the Midas touch? And here to tell us himself is Super Agent Mark McCormick, who joins us now for a rare interview. And it's such a pleasure to have you with us, and a privilege as well. Thanks for coming well, it's out. It's great to be out here. It's a great event. Well, I, I kind of did that report and said, what's next for Mark McCormick? And I'd, I'd like to know that to start out with, and then we'll talk about the state of the game. Well, I think sports is growing throughout the world still, and I think uh, IMG is all over the world, and we're certainly by miles the leader in uh, in our various disciplines and we just hope to get better and better and do a better job for our clients. And Mark, what about tennis? We had uh, mentioned earlier in the program that the women's side of this game is doing very well, but the men's side uh, appears to be faltering a bit, lacking a, a major, major star. What do you think is going to happen in that regard? Well, I think you're right. I think the women's game has so many personalities. You know, the Williams sisters, Jennifer Capriati, Davenport Salas, uh, a lot of great young players, Hanchakova and so many others. Uh, uh, coming in and the men personalities are sort of drifting out of the game, the ones we've known so long and there are a lot of, uh, a lot of Europeans and some very good ones but uh, the game, the men's game lacks a personality at the moment. There's some good comers, James Blake, uh, Leighton Hewitt of course and uh, Roddick and a lot of others but uh, Javier Melis is another real good one. What about the state of tennis as a whole, Mark? Because there are some people who feel that although the USTA has, has come a long way in making tennis appear less elitist, that there's still a long way to go, especially if you contrast it with the popularity of golf. I think that the Grand Slams, including the USTA and Wimbledon, the Australian Open and the French, uh, really have the interest of the game at heart. I think that, uh, unfortunately, the two uh, players associations, the ATP and the WTA, seem so politically oriented all the time that they uh, only seem to care about prize money and uh, I guess maybe they're trying to keep their jobs or something or other. Uh, 
rather than looking at the best interest of the game, the grassroots game, and trying to develop interest in the game. You can't just beat people up to in bad economic conditions and make them pay unrealistic prize monies. They should be devoting their time and efforts to promoting the game. That's interesting you say that on a day when baseball owners and players uh, settled a strike tentatively today. Do you think these same issues that you just described for tennis really permeate the sports world these days, that it's so much more focused on money and marketing than actually playing the game? I think that's true, and I think that's the unfortunate part, and of course, when you uh, set up these associations, very often uh, uh, they think that their uh, sign of accomplishment is how much prize money they get for their constituents. And that isn't, that isn't in the long term best interest of the sport or of their constituents. Because what's in the long term best interest is making a stronger game and getting the public really to uh, grasp it and embrace it like they did many years ago. Mark, you said that on the men's side of things, um, the lack of a personality, the lack of a star personality was one of the problems. In walking around today, uh, around the stadium, I talked to a lot of people who said not only do they want to see a male star that's also a personality, but they're almost looking again for a sports hero, especially in these times as we get closer to September 11th. Well, I think that's true. You've had so many of those uh, uh, in so many other sports, you know, and tennis doesn't have it. There are a lot of people sort of hovering around there. I watched uh, Tommy Haas win earlier today as yes. an attractive young man. Uh, and the crowd uh, was really behind the him. The crowd likes him. I think. Uh, uh, Quirton is a wonderful guy, uh, you know, but uh, America, American tennis really needs a really good American hero. And, and with people, as I say, like, uh, uh, like uh, Roddick and uh, Blake and uh, 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 Taylor Dent and uh, Marty Fish and some of these guys, I think they're going to they're gonna get up to the pinnacle themselves and uh, I think maybe solve a lot of the problems. But the real problem is too much emphasis on prize money by the associations. That a, they ought to get off of that and get into making the game better, more popular, and getting the public and the fans more involved. Mark, let me pick up on Sue's first question. Not so much what's next for you, but what's next for the agency business? It has evolved from being strictly just a player's rep to something that is far more uh, involved uh, with the players' lives, their marketing, their packaging. What, what's the next stage in the evolution of that business? Well, I don't know. I, th I think just to try to provide better services, you know, and more all-embracing services in the area of financial management and long-term career planning. What do you do after you finish playing? These kids finish playing at 28, 29 years old, a lot of them, and, and a good manager is going to think about the end of their career, not just the eight or nine years where they can make some money. And I think uh, all of us who are responsible in this business have to really concentrate on that. Such as sponsorships and things like that? I think sponsorships, broadcasting careers, so they can replace you, for example. Oh, well, thank you that. very much. <laughs> maybe, maybe sooner than we think, I would imagine. <laughs> Do you know something I don't no, know? No, I don't know. You just never know. <laughs> But you guys handle broadcasts as well, right? I we mean, certainly so, yeah. have a lot of very good broadcast, broadcasting clients like John Madden and Bob Costas and John McEnroe and a whole host of others. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm done, too. Okay. Thanks, Mark. We'll Thank let you, you go, because I know you have a, a day with okay. your wife. So Mark McCormick has been our guest today, founder and chairman of IMG. In the next hour of Business Center, they had to go into extra innings, but negotiators avoided a baseball strike. Who won and how much is it going to cost? We'll talk to the head of sports advisory and finance group at Lehman Brothers, who's been keeping score. Also